Hello, everyone. Uh, this is uh, the mentoring uh, effect, measuring effectiveness of uh, LFX um, mentoring programs. Um, my name is Nate Waddington. I'm a developer advocate with the CNCF. Uh, and in that role, I do um, technical writing as well as help run the mentorship programs across the CNCF. Um, I'll let Diane introduce herself. All right, and I'm Diane Mueller, and I'm part of the mentoring working group under the CNCF as well, um, the tech lead there. And I'm also uh, the director of research and advisory services for a small analytics community um, company. Company, thank you. <laughs> it's uh, jet lag day, so forgive me, um, at Betergia. And we have um, been working together on measuring and helping to manage the mentors and the mentees that are part of the CNCF's and the Linux Foundation's mentorship programs. Yes. And how to improve them. And how to improve them, that's the key. Um, and to, to that point, so I'd like to explain just a little bit about uh, the programs that we, we run. Um, I've been a part of the CNCF for probably about three years now, uh, but about probably a year and a half ago, maybe 18 months, um, uh, I had started working with uh, Ehor um, to uh, transition. Uh, he was running the uh, Ehor was running the um, ma uh, mentorship programs prior to to me, and um, unfortunately he ha he was uh, living in uh, Ukraine and had to step away uh, to defend his country. So um, at that point, I had some very very big shoes to fill because he had been running this whole program himself uh, along with. A ton of other things, and so one of the things that I was I'm, I'm, again I'm, I'm a, I, I came in as a technical writer, so trying to figure out community management, which is a big big part of open source generally, was something that was new to me. And so um, after speaking with some folks, uh, we decided to create the mentorship uh, working group under uh, the CNCF's uh, tag contributor uh, strategy group, and the goal there was. Uh, the, the, uh, maybe a little bit about the, the, um, the tag contributor strategy is it's, it's all about maintainers helping maintainers and uh, having folks uh, help each other to grow new contributors, which made for a good fit for the mentoring program. Um, so its goal is to increase uh, the number of maintainers, obviously, um, the number of contributors. Uh, we want, I mean, one of our big wins, and this is uh, something we'll talk about a little bit later, um, if we can have a mentee become a contributor, a continuing contributor, become a maintainer, and then become a mentor again, completing the circle, that's, that's, that's a top, top, top shelf goal uh, there. Um, so we want to increase the quality of uh, mentorship of the CNCF. We want to increase um, the diversity of folks participating, both um, mentees and mentors. Uh, we want to increase the number of projects uh, that the that participate, frankly. Um, we have a lot of projects in the CNCF and we'd like to see more of them uh, uh, contribute. Um, we'd like to increase the number and type of uh, work that's done. Uh, there's a lot of talk about uh, code contributions, but there are non-code contributions. If you're a, a technical writer or a designer or um, even a project manager, we have got some work for you. Uh, so this is the, the type of thing that I'd like to do, increase the diversity of types of work. Uh, and so when we set up this uh, working group, um, one of the things I was doing was having a monthly meeting and I kept having these uh, very rudimentary uh, spreadsheets with numbers saying, oh, well, the last term we had this many people come in and this many mentors and this many projects were, uh, and then I don't know, if you started, or if you reached out to me, or if, if, if. I think I saw one of your spreadsheets and, oh my God. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's not a way to track things. Yes, uh, it's a start. Mm, uh, I had, I had start. an intuition an intuition on some of the numbers that we were getting, uh, but uh, when, when Diane saw the state of uh, the effect of, of, of what we were doing, uh, we started a collaboration uh, where we uh, really started to try and dig into the numbers because if we can't, measure what we're doing, right, and we make decisions, how do we know that the decisions that we made were successful? Uh, so I think at this point, um, probably I want to uh, hand this back over to, 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 to Diane to talk a little bit about how we moved forward with, uh, with um, yeah, so, uh, the data set. 
So if you go one more slide, and I'll talk a little bit about um, the research um, meant, uh, methodology that we've used. And um, I'll step back a little bit, too, and say, so for the past 10 years, I've managed a large ecosystem of um, participants in the open shift at Red Hat communities, um, which if you've been following the CNCF and Kubernetes, that was sort of an exponential growth of the number of people participating in the community that I was um, asked to help manage and grow. And so when that happened, I stepped in and started using um, some tools from a company called Batergia that um, allowed me to manage and track um, the participation of developers, whether they're end user developers, uh, code contribution developers, people logging an issue, all of that sort of stuff. Um, and it was the secret sauce in my um, minor success in that world um, for a number of years. And then when I made an attempt at semi-retiring, I decided that I'd still contribute back to the CNCF and come play in the mentoring working group because mentoring is near and dear to my heart. Um, and so what I've tried to do um, for the mentoring working group as their tech lead is to apply those same tools and techniques that I use for growing an entire community to focus it down on the mentees and the mentors in the CNCF's um, uh, the cohorts for the different years. So the things that he had tied up and um, found up in spreadsheets. Yep. Um, so many spreadsheets. So many spreadsheets, too many spreadsheets. And I, we still have spreadsheets. We haven't gotten rid of all of them. But um, they have two main data sources um, besides GitHub. They have the Linux Foundation's um, very nice, beautiful um, web portal for the mentees and mentors. Yeah. And that has a back end to it that allows us to download the names of the participants and what, you know, what cohort they're in. And by cohort, I mean what period. Were they spring, fall, summer, um, and which year, and what term it was, and we have a whole thing. So we went and, and the Linux Foundation, what he didn't mention was there are a whole lot of other mentorship programs. Like, so this little bit of research we're going to talk about today is just focusing on the CNCF one. So people who worked on CNCF mentorships um, so we look, focus on that. There is the Google Summer of Code that the Linux Foundation participates in, Outreachy, and every other Linux Foundation um, that has a mentorship program. It. So the same techniques we're going to be applying, we'll talk a little bit about that to a few other things like the Linux kernel. Mm -hmm. um, and so we'll talk a little bit about that. So what we tried to do was take the baseline data out of the Linux Foundation's um, back end from the mentorship and then use that to create if you want to go one more, um, to create the, the um, subsets um, and the filtering for the different groupings, right. which allowed us to use all of those wonderful dashboards that we had. Um, and uh, we were be being pretty particular about which ones we were doing. So it allows us to see um, people who are commenting issues, how they changed over time their affiliations with companies. So if they came in as a university student and then managed to get a job with a um, CNCF member organization or went off to another career in accounting because they didn't decided that maybe insurance adjusting was, yep. was more fun. <laughs> so you can go again. So that's kind of where we're doing, where were we doing that stuff. So give us another thing here. So um, we really, Try, I tried very hard to be very quantitative about it. So he's got all the qualitative stuff. The Linux Foundation does a number of surveys every yeah. year asking people how was it, did you get what you needed out of it, those kinds of things. What I was trying to stick to would be very structured data collection, um, things that you, some of the things you can't really argue about, whether they made a commit or not, whether they logged an issue or not. Um, and one of the keys to doing this is not just at the end of the term, but during the term, if someone um, hasn't yet made a merge or a commit and they're in a mentorship program, that's maybe a red flag for the admin of the yeah. mentorship program to go reach out to a, a mentee, mentor. And, and to that point, actually, it was interesting. One of the anecdotes I always like to share here now is um, at one point, uh, Diane was going through the data uh, and she said, Nate, there's something a little bit weird about this particular uh, individual. Why, why this, this individual looks like they are this other uh, individual. And I thought to myself, there's a very good reason for that, and that's because that person had changed their profile to um, apply again. Uh, so they said, uh, you know what, I want, I, there's, we, for the LFX program, we're only allowing 
a person to participate once, but they wanted to participate a second time. And so they changed their data and made a look at it. And I only found out about that because somebody had opened um, a support ticket saying, hey, this person doesn't fit the category of, of, of being eligible to, to participate. Now, had I had that data set three weeks earlier, I could have solved some, some problems right off, right off the bat. So these are the types of things as an administrator that I'm looking for uh, in terms of uh, um, uh, the, the, these data sets. Yeah, and so the whole goal of this was to create um, repeatable, reusable dashboards for people like uh, Nathan and other people in other mentorship programs to be able to flow it through and um, watch and monitor um, the programs as in real time, and then over time to be able to see how this affected their careers, whether they went on to become mentors, um, whether they went on to become maintainers. So take a little bit. So this um, cohort um, dashboard is, you can see that doing something here with a filter, which is the list of all the names of the people who participated. So um, Viturgia comes with a bunch of um, identity management tools. It's called Sorting Hat, if any of you are Harry Potter fans, which is kind of the whole gist <laughs> behind Viturgia's naming conventions, I think, for their products. And then filtering it on like for the last seven years. So then you can get all the stats that you would normally see for developer participation. But this time, it's filtered down just to that cohort. So um, those two things are really powerful when you can group people together and then look at them over time as they're evolving. So um, the other thing is um, we can see things like retention. So one of the key things that we're really looking for is if they stayed in their project um, post their, uh, their mentorship. So some people come in and they do multiple internships. They do a, uh, Google Summer of Code, they'll do one with Intel, they'll do one with Red Hat, they'll do one with us, and they're building up their, their resume and their career, but they're jumping from project to project. And so really, which is great, and people, lots of people do that. I'm shocked at how many did so many. Um, I look at these people, I'm like, oh my God, where did you find the time to do that? But what we're looking for in the CNCF is we're trying to train more people to do things like Kubernetes and be cloud natives. And we would really like, if we're going to put the effort into them being um, ment mentored that they would stay and grow into being pr active participants. So we can look at um, post their event um, that it, we can look in and see who stayed and who didn't stay, whether they stayed in the focus of their mentorship or whether they went on to work in one of the other, how many projects are there? I have 177 projects last time I checked. Yeah. So there's lots of things for them to choose from. So we're yeah. not totally particular. Well, and that's, and that's one of the things too that uh, I think one of the things I'd like to do is redefine what winning is a little bit. If somebody is coming in and doing cloud native computing um, uh, uh, menteeship and then decides, oh, you know what, I'm really into storage and goes off and uh, uh, does um, another internship with uh, somebody else and says, okay, well, I'm not doing cloud anymore, but I'm still working in open source over here, I think that's still a win for us. And that's the type of thing that we can find out uh, here as well. And you can't do that with a spreadsheet. So here we go. So <laughs> part of it, too, is um, the retention, whether they, we retain, retain them within the project so they continue to work. Say they did something in Flux at, as an internship, and then they stayed on and continued to work in that. Or whether they um, were at a university and then ended up working at um, another company like especially wonderful if it's a CNCF member organization. Um, the other thing is even if they didn't go to a CNCF member organization, maybe that's a new potential member because they may, we may not have known that that um, company was using uh, Flux or Service Mesh or uh, Kubernetes. And here we have this wonderful database um, with all the indexes and that we can see over time their affiliation change, so mm -hmm. the, their career growth. Um, and what projects they're working on are really important. So you start to drill down on that. Um, the other things that are really interesting, um, if you're a total data nerd like we have become, and I am, um, is the connections between projects and people. Um, and some mentors are better than others. And or, are, or, at least, or at least are more prolific. <laughs> more prolific. And I think this is the one thing, if anyone wa is watching this out in you know, YouTube land afterwards, yeah. and you are a maintainer on a CNCF open source project, and you haven't come and talked to Nate about 
um, utilizing the mentorship program. It is the hidden secret of the whole CNCF. They are paid for the most part. Uh, our mentees are all paid. Are all paid. Yeah. Yeah, some of the Linux kernel ones are unpaid, I think, but um, I, some of the older it, ones. Potentially. Potentially um, or some but, of them. But from, from, from but here But if on, you're a CNCF and yeah. you have an artifact or some documentation or something you need done, this is an amazing program to um, participate in and it doesn't really, it's not that hard to get involved in and there's a call for papers coming up soon. Mm -hmm. But one of the things we start to look at is the connectedness that ret they retain from the mentor. So in this case, if we zoom in a little bit, the next slide, um, we can see that affiliation was meshery, and we were trying to figure out why was all this meshery mm -hmm. stuff going on. And that's a wonderful project. They sponsored a whole bunch of um, small artifacts and really effectively used the mentorship program. If you go one more time. And then this guy popped up. <laughs> if you haven't met Lee Calcott, um, then, the, then you haven't been around the CNCF very much. But he at, <laughs> um, runs a small company now uh, called Layer 5, yep. and he has really effectively used um, and grown a number of people within his network of who have then either gone on to continue to contribute to Meshery, or um, actually even, if you click one more time, um, oops. Oops, have, mm -hmm. have gone in, on to um, join Layer 5 as employees because they spent this time um, being trained. So this was you know, kind of one of the wonderful things about being able to drill down on the data and see it over the life of um, these people's <laughs> careers. Um, we focused in this first half of the, the research, because we've only been doing this for a few months now. About three, yeah. Three months on the mentees. But the same is, can be said to be true for the mentors. Some of these mentors, these are the first times that they've really managed other people. It's a great growth opportunity to, um, for them to learn skills around managing developer resources. So, go again. so you can also see that it's not just the Meshery project that um, benefited. We can drill down and see that these, this small little cohort that we were looking at had contributed to over three, 33 other CNCF projects. So you can see all this from the GitHub data, from the comments, from the issues, from the mailing list participation that we've pulled into the data, data lake that we use and the indexes that um, parse through it all. So this is, these are the kinds of tools that we're really trying hard to, um, oops. Sorry. Yeah, you can, you can run that if you'd like. I think I can run that. Let's see. There yeah. we go. Sorry. Then. So, um, so we can see these things um, and we're, what we're really looking for is patterns and best practices. So when we look at someone like Lee who's done this, and we, we still do have spreadsheets, um, we can also see other companies and other projects that have really effectively done this. That, um, and we can encourage and talk to those menti mentors and um, find out what they did and what the best practices are. And some of these things um, popped out big time. Let's yeah, go to the next absolutely. one. I just, before we move on, I really, I really want to emphasize that. Um, mentees who participated in uh, the mentoring program with Lee uh, went on to contribute to 33 other projects. That's a force multiplier. That's, that, it's, it's, that's an impressive um, amount of, of contributions to have generated. Yeah, and so you have also this um, other virtuous cycle yeah. of people who were mentees who became mentors. And so we can track that too because some of that data is flagged there and it's flagged and it's, it's it's a very rare thing to i think i can count it on one hand how many times this has happened in the last few years so finding those pieces of data are, is 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 really helpful because then you can go back and see what the process was like oh well, who who was doing this what were they doing yeah and then you can nurture these people so that and support them and then go help them uh go back to their organizations and say see I, you, you allowed me to do these, you know, 10 mentorships at, you know, with Huawei and Hongkei, Ren was the example that we pulled up, but there were lots of these patterns that we could see in the data now. And all of these things, um, if you're managing a, if you're at a foundation or in an open source project and you're trying to manage your mentees, you can't find that with a spreadsheet. And so this allows us to see these connections between people so then if we're looking for a mentee that has contributed to, say, etcd, or um, logged an issue at least on etcd, and then maybe is working in Kubernetes and you're trying to find someone for your, to mentor to work on some artifact, 
um, you can use these tools to do that. And that's really what we're trying to do is um, kind of look at people as they flip through and become mentors and mentees because those people I think it originally you had to be a maintainer to be a mentor, yeah. and I think they've switched that around a little yeah, bit now. Yeah, we, we did. Uh, we made that change about a year ago, and uh, again, maintainers are some of our most time-starved community members. And to say that, oh, if you want to participate in the mentoring program, you have to be a maintainer was too onerous. And so one of the things that we found was saying, okay, if you have a trusted contributor with a commit access uh, or approve access at least um, and the maintainer is willing to sign off on it then we were able to grow I think we went from from something like 50 or 100 last year to 100 almost 150 this year even even small changes like that saying okay you know what who is eligible to be a, a, a maintainer or can we have multiple maintainers on Rather, sorry, mentors. There's too many M words here. The maintainers, uh, mentors, mentees. Um, saying, okay, you can have multiple mentors on a thing, and not every one of them has to be a maintainer. As long as the maintainer signs off on it at the beginning, then we're able to to include a whole lot more people. Really grow our pie. So let's see. What, what was the next one? Uh, additional so, metrics. Yeah. So the other thing, you know, a lot of it is about rate, uh, retention rates. You know, like, did they stay in the ecosystem? Did they go to join a member organization? Did we grow a skilled um, developer or a technical documentation person or a website person or a kernel you know what what is being able to watch these things and grow them um, has been really 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 helpful um, and you know some of the some of the stuff you know pe making sure people don't disappear off the radar yeah. um, we had one of the best practices that came out almost immediately was um, on the Linux Foundation's profile pages. An incomplete profile was almost a perfect red flag for someone who was not going to be retained in the ecosystem. Um, you could correlate those two things pretty closely. So we've been able to go back and in this next cohort make sure that they did do uh, a good job on their profile page and so people could find them to hire them. These are basic <laughs> things, but you wouldn't expect, <laughs> but you can see that corollary yeah. pretty close. Well, this is, and this is where this is all feeding back into, is if, as we're writing our administrative guides for our mentoring programs, these are the types of things that we're putting back in, saying, okay, well, these are our list of best practices as we know them. So go for it, other areas of research. All right, so, um, so today you heard in the opening keynote, um, Linus was talking about 50% of the maintainers have been there all the time, and then the other 50% are doing one little kernel patch and then walk away and disappear. And so one of the things, and it, it was really gratifying to hear that because yeah. it correlates with some of the numbers that we're seeing. So we've also started um, working with the Linux kernel mentorships. So that's really the next co series of cohorts that we're gonna do some deep diving and analysis. And we've started, um, and one of the things we did because we were so interested in seeing how the retention in the ecosystem and how important it is to get them to stay to be um, maintainers um, for the kernel, because as the average age is getting older. Um, I, that's a fair characterization. Okay, I think, yeah. we got some gray hairs <laughs> going on. Um, that we really want to make sure that we're nurturing these things. And Shua Khan, who works with the Linux Foundation, and way down here you can, um, let's see if I can do this, this little one is Shua Khan, and we filtered up here um, on just the, all the names of all of the people that she has gone through and she's been one of the mentors for. A lot of yeah. times there's two mentors for each of things, but I just filtered on okay. everybody that Shua had worked on and then every, and what, what companies um, they were working on. And so this is, um, she's, she's got people working on Elisa, on the kernel, on drivers, all kinds of things underneath her and we're really trying to use the same methodology we use for the CNCF to help with the Linux, understanding the Linux kernel mentorship program and how we can make it more effective. And, you know, again, um, this is, for me, I mean, I love these diagrams and I know they're very tiny and you probably can't see them, so download Sorry. the PDF yep. and scan them out. But um, the really interesting thing for here is to start to look at the affiliations, and I did this so the last seven years, but I think it did uh, Linus said 23 years of that. So we have, we have all the data for the Linux kernel yeah, in the, to, the, the yeah, data set now. So I, I could go back to this. And what's interesting here is this is the network diagram of everyone and how they're related of hers to um, 
uh, to Shua, so all of the people that she mentored, this is her, her connection list, and whether they're still in the community or not, and whether they're contributing. But it also, over time, the affiliations show up um, as well, and it's the affiliations that show up in these graphs at the time of their contribution. So one of the, the really key things is being able to do that. And if you go to the next slide, I think that shows it a little bit better. It's like, and I, this is just Shua's diagram here, but you can see that she worked at HP f until 2019, and then Samsung, and now she's at the Linux Foundation. But at the time of the majority of her um, contributions in the last seven years, though I think the last one that was in that cohort group was, um, she was working at Samsung. Yeah. So the affiliations still stay tagged to whomever they were working for or they declared themselves as working for. Right. And the data is really, it, it's coming from GitHub, what they did over time, the historical data analysis of GitHub and the repositories and to taking all that information in and being able to pull all of that together. So if you go one more. So for them, it's uh, again, the same thing that's really um, beyond retention is really trying to find out uh, mentees who became mentors and the most important thing really in the Linux kernel is, and we can grab the maintainers MD files from all of the, um, the sub directories mm -hmm. and use those to flag people as maintainers and see and compare who's come in as a maintainer um, after they did a mentorship program. Um, and growing more mentors, so sorting out who can um, be a mentor and partnering them with older, or not older, wiser, more experienced <laughs> mentees and mentors. Um, and the next thing that we're doing, and one of the things I'm really psyched about being here is um, we're adding in all of the projects from um, the automotive Linux yeah. ecosystem too. So we'll be able to see if there's any crossover from the Linux kernel participation to all of the stuff that's going on in Yocto and everything that's happening in, in AGL too. So making, just like we had for the CNCF, all of the CNCF projects in one big data set that we can compare where people are moving to and from, yeah. we can do the same thing. I my, my hypothesis is there's a lot of overlap between a lot of what's going on in uh, the Linux Foundation. And we or, really, or not. Or, well, this is, this is or my not. hypothesis. They we could all test. be working on drivers and we never going test. to the core. So <laughs> go for it. Yeah. And, and so that's, um, again, so what we're trying to get out of this is, is how do we improve uh, our um, processes and our practices. Um, LFX profiles are a big part of, of uh, people being able to get hired from having done a mentorship, uh, making sure that your GitHub uh, profile is, if you, if, if, if you just have the default profile, that's good, but if you, 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 can, you can change that and make it a, a, um, a um, like a real, uh, um, you can tout your achievements right there as your own personal website, but within the GitHub uh, pro, um, ecosystem, it really is uh, uh, effective. Again, uh, I, I sort of uh, talked about the, the once is enough um, uh, uh, anecdote already, but it was, it was really one of those things where it, it, it sort of showed me the, the power of, of, of having data sort of at your, at your um, instead, of, instead of having to have somebody open a, um, a support ticket saying, hey, there's an issue here, to have been able to catch that and not have to have gone through any disciplinary action and just said, okay, well, you, you're, instead, of, instead of like accepting them and then saying, sorry, you're actually not accepted, to have been able to, to, to predict that and catch that in real time would have been amazing. Um, and then uh, some of the things that we're, we're doing, and uh, uh, the Linux Foundation is already doing this, but uh, following up uh, with, with surveys to really find out, okay, well, um, it, it, it's, it's, because this is all uh, self-reported and whatnot, looking, uh, looking at LinkedIn and looking at uh, GitHub and whatnot and uh, uh, associations there, uh, mm -hmm. reaching out to former mentors, former mentees, and seeing where they're at today and how they uh, feel having uh, gone through the program uh, yeah, I earlier. Think, I think that was one of the things, too, is that yeah that the research methodology, um, I'm, I'm all about the data. Yeah. Like, that's really, I love the data. Um, but I think one of the things is the, all the follow-up surveys that we have to do as well. We have the connections to the people that through the Linux Foundation's um, mailing list and that, and yeah. trying to make sure that they um, stay connected to the CNCF or we know 
why they didn't, um, if something happened, or they all did go on to become actuaries instead right, of yeah. <laughs> de which developers. Is, yeah, which which happens? Is, it happened yeah. once, so I, that's why I keep <laughs> rounding on that. But it also allows make sure that nobody falls off the rails here. Right. You know, we can really keep track real time of the participants in the present cohort um, as well, and flag much more, uh, much better. Um, early warnings when somebody's not participating actively or has you know not been able to yeah. meet with with a mentor and stuff so it's it's a mix of the qualitative stuff and the quantitative stuff and I always say if you don't have context you can't do this if you just have the data you need someone like Nate who's dedicated to this knows all the players and where they're hiding yeah um, and speaking of the players and where they're hiding one of the things that uh, I feel like we need to get better at in our program is thanking them um, a lot of uh, 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 folks spend a lot of time uh, mentoring. It's not, a, it's, not a, it's not a small thing that we ask folks to do. And there's also the, the, the companies that they're working for. All of our, all of our mentees are paid. That's, that's coming through the LFX. But the mentors, we expect, are all paid by their employer to do this work. And so thanking both the mentors and the, 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 the member companies that are supporting them is another piece that we're, we're adding in uh, moving forward, saying, OK, how can we thank folks? How can we uh, show um, tokens of appreciation, be it credly badges or other pieces of um, uh, um, uh, appreciation that we can uh, bring, bring forward. I'm going to say one more thing is that, oh. that on here, improving engagement practices, but also giving people like Nate at the different um, mentorship programs the tools to do this. Because as I think he just sort of glossed it over. I think they went from 30 to 50 people in a cohort um, to like 150 people. Yeah. And when there's only one administrator, uh, that's a really tough thing to manage and to keep track of these people and to be, not be able to have some sort of a dashboard or some, 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 something to help with the automation. So these guys, Ihor before him, um, Nate, the Shua, the Linux, uh, who's managing the Linux kernel folks, yeah. <laughs> these people are just doing amazing things. Um, and what we really, as part of the mentoring working group, we want to thank them as well um, and also give them the tools and the um, best practices and documentation yeah. feedback loop to make this even a, a bigger pro problem yeah. for them to solve. Um, and so again, going back to, to some of the, the, the mentoring working group um, thing, that's, that's part of, uh, we've now uh, recruited um, a community member to help uh, administer uh, Google Summer of Code with us. Um, we're just shifting chairs now, um, and so I'm still staying on as a co-chair. We're bringing on a new co-chair who will likely be uh, helping with uh, some of the administration um, of the LFX program as well. So we're trying to, 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 to even in the, um, the organization, uh, have community members come in and, and participate in this way as well. Um, and just as, this is just an interesting uh, piece uh, of, of 170, and, and this is again CNCF sort of focus rather than going back to the Linux Foundation level, but uh, uh, only 55 of 177 projects have participated in the mentoring program so far. Um, and so, well, as a project, why would you want to participate? Well, you get a piece of work done, <laughs> right? You're helping, you're helping grow uh, your, um, your project. You get to recruit new contributors. You've got uh, an increase in your project's visibility, especially if uh, people are writing about it and doing blog entries for um, uh, the work that has been done. Uh, so it's a real opportunity to help grow your project in a, 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 in a, 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 a very productive way where you're helping people come along and then grow their careers. Um, this, uh, this slide actually was, uh, I think, a leftover from the member summit, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep it in here because uh, like, if you're a member organization of the CNCF, why would you want to, to, to participate in the mentorship program? Well, again, you get a piece of work done. If you're supporting an open source project that you're already depending on as a part of your business, and you've got one of your um, employees working as a mentor, then you've got the opportunity to, to, to uh, learn uh, who some of the folks in the ecosystem are, and potentially uh, that's a way of recruiting people into your company. Um, uh, so yeah, both recruiting mentees as contributors, but also potentially recruiting mentees as uh, employees. I think the, the, um, the other thing um, 
the visibility that we get now uh, down to the affiliations of the mentors um, and the ability for us to go and thank the mentors organizations yeah. um, for letting them be mentors. I think sometimes it's a surprise to the mentors organization that their person has um, done spent this, spent time. this time and effort as, as, as a mentor. Yeah. And I think that's one of the things that we, we're trying to build into our practices for the mentorship programs is making sure that um, they're properly supported by their member organizations, that the member organizations really see the benefits of um, allowing their employees to do so. And um, that's really um, one of the key things here for member organizations is we've always heard Kubernetes is hard, you know, all <laughs> these things, and we're, you know, we need to get these um, skilled technical developers out there and technical documentation folks out here. This is why this program exists. Yeah, and sure. Um, anything we can do to yeah. facilitate scaling Nate. There's a lot of very talented mentees out there. Please hire them. Um, so why, why should you be a mentor? Uh, and I think that this, this is very similar to, to why you would want to be a mentee. It's an opportunity to grow your career. Um, a lot of, uh, uh, I, I hope, uh, and I'm coaching now, uh, our mentors to include mentoring work in their promo packets uh, uh, if, if they happen to be working for a company that does that. Um, you're growing your network. You're, you're, you're meeting folks who are new in the program, coming up, uh, uh, and potentially, if you're new in a, um, in a job, right, and you're saying, hey, I've got this open source project that I'm working on, and I've written a proposal for a mentorship term, submitted that, and got that accepted. Uh, so you're showing uh, thought leadership on, okay, what needs to be updated in, in, in a project. You're doing interviews and figuring out who should best do that work. So you're hiring people, you're managing the work that they're doing. These are all full-time programs for the mentees. So if you're bringing somebody on as a mentor, not only are you like mentoring them and coaching them, but you're also like checking their work and understanding. So now all of a sudden you can see, okay, well, my, this is how I'm communicating with my mentee. Uh, we've got these issues opened up. Uh, here's the, 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 the PR that my mentee has uh, opened up. Here's the feedback that I've provided them and the changes that they made based on my feedback. And then you've got, hopefully, uh, a merged commit. Uh, and then you can say, okay, not only have I coached somebody through this whole process, uh, I've also um, been able to communicate that to my boss, potentially, and uh, hopefully getting uh, some uh, uh, um, recognition from that from, from uh, the employee side. Uh, so I think we're just about out of time here. Yes. Um, so uh, I think we've got a little bit of time left. I've got two minutes on my clock here. Are there any questions? How many of you in the room, I have a question, are um, running mentorship programs with your projects today? There's a couple of you in the room doing that. And um, so I think, and, and are they CNCF projects or outside of CNCF? Uh, I'm outside, uh, I'm from WordPress. Oh, yeah. oh. And I've, you have a really lovely site inside of WordPress um, recognizing um, mentors. I've, I've, I've gone over and taken a peek at it. So much like the Linux Foundation has its um, profile pages for the mentees and the mentorships, um, the, the WordPress folks have a very nice way to showcase the people who are working on that. And I think that's, that's one of the key pieces, outcomes here is, is, is there a way um, besides listing on your LinkedIn page that you can, as a foundation, add value to this stuff so they can get a rec It's almost like recognition, too. It's very well done over there. So kudos you. to you over there. Thank you. Oh, cool. Thank you. And there's a stop sign in front of me, but there's a question way back here. So go for it. Yeah. Um, I'm at UC Santa Cruz, and so we have a couple of different ways that we engage university students with uh, outside projects and also in internal research projects. Um, I, my question, well, I have a few questions. <laughs> I'll come it. find you afterwards, but yeah, uh, my first question is, so you indicated, you know, the data can reveal something like a particular mentor who has, is having huge impact, um, and I was wondering if you've done any work yet to investigate, like, the characteristics of a good mentor, like so inventories that you're yeah. distributing to, like there's some really 
interesting mentorship inventories that assess like mentee, um, how mentees feel respected, engaged, et cetera, uh, or if there's other ideas you have about that. There, there's actually a lot of literature, academic literature out yeah. there, and we've been working, um, starting to work with the OSU, Oregon State University, uh, Oregon State, yeah. mm -hmm. um, and they've done a good extensive listing of all the register, Better. and I keep getting the, the stop yeah. sign here, but I'm going <laughs> to talk to me afterwards. Yeah, I'll come but, find but you. But yes, there, and, and there are some, what I'm trying now to do is take those academic findings and see if they actually fall out in the data. And so do the corollary there. So, yeah. um, and they, there's, I think OSU gave us a list of 18 factors and um, that they had culled from academic papers. And now I want to apply that to the data to see if that actually shows up in the data. And you know, like the little example we gave of, did they have a decent profile um, up there? Uh, and how did that affect their career opportunities afterwards or their, their retention in the ecosystem? Um, and that was hilarious because I had no idea that that would be a, a flag for that. But it was quite, it's quite fun. Um, and, and you can go down wormholes, mm -hmm. but there are a lot of what we're trying to do is take this information and apply it to the documentation um, for training mentors and mentees um, in the, um, the documentation for the mentorship program and roll it out to other parts of the Linux Foundation and, and yeah. the academic and other foundations as well. So I think folks are coming in for the next talk. Is there is there time for one more question, or are we are we finished? We no. are. Uh, we are we are done. Thank all you right. all for coming out. Thank we you appreciate for coming. It. Enjoy the rest of your day. All right. Take care.